Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday with the Library Corporation. My name is Jameson Reynolds and I'm the Director of Marketing Strategy here at TLC. We're back in a uh, Webinar Wednesday capacity. We, uh, we took a few uh, weeks off, maybe a month or two, a little over a month off, but we are back doing this again. Uh, we thought about maybe starting out with Aerosmith back in the saddle, but um, I, we weren't going to pay for the rights. So anyway, imagine that that played as I'm talking over a music bed. So uh, what we are going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about Webinar Wednesday. Um, in the past, when uh, the pandemic started, this had started out as a weekly series and then kind of spread out from there. Uh, moving forward in 2021, we're looking at doing this as a monthly series where once a month we may have a webinar and then maybe from there as the year goes on we're going to expand into more um maybe every other week um something along those lines so that's just something i wanted to throw out for all of you that are uh, regular attendees those that have uh stopped by and learned a little something in the past we're still going to do it just not as frequently as we had uh what we are going to talk about today is actually as you can probably see on your screen and as you read in the description, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Modern Library Awards. Um, for those of you that are not aware of what the Modern Library Awards are, uh, the Modern Library Awards were created to recognize the top products and services in the library industry in a truly unbiased format. Products and services were submitted in the fall using a simple application were then posted on a private site with enhanced description and attendant materials. These products were batched into small groups and sent to library works uh, and for their database of more than 80,000 librarians at public K-12 academic and special libraries. Only customers with experience using these products and services in their facilities were permitted to judge the products and services, resulting in a truly unbiased score. Each judge scored the product on a numeric basis from one to 10 on a series of questions regarding functionality, value, customer service, the service with the overall highest score was awarded the coveted service of the year award. And I say that because TLC actually won two awards this year. We won a gold award for Carl Connect Discovery. And I will say, based on what we were just talking about, one through 10, we just missed platinum just by a little bit. But we, I know, I know. But uh, we have gold uh, with Carl Connect Discovery. And then our TLC Cloud Services. Um, from a scoring perspective was not only what would have been considered in that platinum range, we actually went above that and were named the service of the year, an honor that we're all really proud of here at TLC. So let me talk a little bit about those two products and then we're gonna start our discussion. Um, Carl Connect Discovery, uh, the industry leader in search technology, viewing results as a ferberized group and search engine optimization, enhanced discovery of your library's collections. Progressive features include a responsive design, personalized recommendations, and geolocation services. We also offer a fun, kid-centric version and an intuitive mobile interface. So it's Carl Connect Discovery. Um, I will also make, make note of, um, you may know TLC is having two library management software platforms, Carl, um, Carl Connect, and then library.solution, which also has LS. This award is specifically for the Carl Connect group and the work that Carl did with that. In addition to that, let's talk about TLC Cloud Services. TLC has teamed up with Oracle to redefine your experience with hosting library services, introducing TLC Cloud Services, an improved hosting platform. TLC Cloud Services utilizes Oracle Cloud infrastructure to provide our customers with unmatched control, security, and predictability to deliver high-performance cloud-based infrastructure services. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. I would like to introduce the other people that have been very patient and quiet as I've been talking and going through all of this. We have um, Ebony Pacheco Hoos, who is uh, with our product group in our Carl office, with our Carl group. And we have Justin Dulles-Anizer, who is our CTO with uh, the Library Corporation. So welcome, panelists. And let's go ahead and get started. And Ebony, I'd like to start with you, actually. Um, when we talk about Carl Connect Discovery, and even in that description I just read, um, I mentioned Ferber. Can you take a moment and give everyone a quick understanding of what actually Ferber is? Sure. So um, Ferber actually stands for Functional Requirements for Bibliographic Records, and is you know something the library industry and certainly kind of cataloging has been talking about for a long time, and how we can group records together um, by their kind of their manifestation of a work, a particular work that then um, 
patrons people can search and find material for. Um, from a Carl Connect discovery perspective and implement when we implemented our grouped title displays um, or Ferber, the idea is Ferber is there as a standard, but we wanted to get started on it um, and really making sure that uh, we're presenting a catalog that patrons and libraries are really looking for to be able to search for a single title and find everything and not have to worry, well, am I looking for the 1994 copy or the 92 copy or the 90 copy or, you know, by this publisher or this publisher. I want everything together. So it's really grouping those titles together is really presenting it for kind of the layman. It's, it's, it's there, it's easy to find, and you go from there. Awesome. Um, I will say, as I went into actually asking Ebony our first question, I do want to let everyone know that's on this webinar. If you have any questions as we go through this, please don't hesitate to go ahead and type those questions in. We will, we may not answer them as we go through this, but we uh, will come back and circle back and get those at the end as I've kind of gone through my my uh, pre-prepared my pre my prepared questions. Sorry, you can tell I'm a little rusty at this. I'm writing things down and I can't talk, and I apologize for that, but. Um, we will try to get to the questions we can, and also we always do our best to try to keep these to a half hour or less, and we're going to go ahead and set that same standard for this one. I can't assure you that we won't go past um, 3.30 in the East, but we will, we will try. Okay, so Ebony, back to uh, talking about Carl Connect Discovery. Um, it seems like many packs and discovery layers um, on the market currently have not made this pivot, to bring Ferber to such a level of prominence in the structure of their packs. Uh, why did you and the Carl team feel now was the time to make such an investment in Ferber? So part of it is really, again, there's kind of this waiting game. As uh, you know, library industries change, as the cataloging community is really waiting for kind of the bib frame 2.0 to complete and having the ILS vendors respond to that and have an interface where they can catalog in a way that's different than Mark, that's, We've been waiting a long time. You know, I started out at a library working in cataloging and it was Mark and 15 years later, we're still in Mark. There's not a, you know, there's a path to get away from Mark, but it's still what we work in. It's still Mark records are Mark records. Um, and we really didn't want to kind of keep playing the, well, we'll wait for the, the library industry to be ready for us to have a, a complete interface in BibFrame 2.0. And, you know, kind of this back and forth. So it was really about saying, you know, what is the important piece for patrons and for libraries? And it really was the ability not to how it's cataloged in the back end, because most patrons aren't going to care how it's cataloged. They want to be able to find something easily. So we said, you know, what is the important part from a, a public interface perspective? And it was really about grouping those records together. So we said, yes, there is still standards being reviewed and updated, and they will come out, and Carl will respond appropriately. And, and get those things into our product, but we really wanted to take the opportunity to say we need to prove, we not prove, but we want to show why this is important in the front end. They can all be cataloged as works and as manifestations of a work, but those 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 words aren't much to a patron. They want to go in and they want to search for, you know, the newest Nora Roberts, the newest James Patterson, and say, oh look, the library has the large print and they have the audiobook and they have the ebook and they have the e-audiobook. And they just want to see it like Amazon. They want to see it like, you know, as they go out to the web and do any of those searches. They won't don't want to see five pages of the results of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. They want to say, oh, here's my one entry for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And they have it in, you know, all these different formats. I can very easily click on that one. So it was really about really bringing the all of that work to put, make it easy for the patron to to browse and to find materials that they're looking for. So we decided to kind of, you know, take that leap um, from a uh, a pack. Um, in, integrated into our system. So there are other, you know, definitely other discovery layers that libraries can purchase separately, but we decided to go with the idea that this is what we want our libraries to have available to them. They don't have to go out and purchase another discovery layer. They get from within Carl, they get their, their base patron access catalog is going to have the Ferberized view just by default because that is there and that is where we're moving that's what our libraries want that's what patrons even though if they they are never going to call it a ferberized catalog that's what patrons want they'll tell you what they want 
and we decided to just take the leap and do it. And we're excited that we did because, um, you know, as as you know, we have a lot of librarians on staff, and this is something that we've all wanted to see for years. You know, we're like we when we see the de development demonstrations, we're like. <gasps> This is what we've been waiting for. This catalog, this is what we wanted to see. And it makes us happy as well. Like not only can we be happy about what we're developing, but we're happy to show it to our libraries and, and really say, hey, look what we did. This is for your patrons. Your patrons are gonna love this. So. I'm glad you mentioned the, the librarians on staff and the fact that this is something that we've wanted to see for years because just because we may have won this award in 2000, you know, for 2020, it's not like at the beginning of the year, someone said, you know, we should do this thing. You know, it takes, it takes years to get to where we are. So that, that was really, that was really, thank you for pointing that out. Um, in order for this Ferber, um, for this to work within the pack, uh, do do we do we need to modify a customer's data or are we able to utilize a customer's data as is? So the customer's data is as is, as is and all they have to do is just do what they would do before is add record, add bibliographic records, modify bibliographic records, update bibliographic records. What we have in the back end, back end within the Carl product is what we call intellectual identifiers. So in the back end, it takes the data, consumes the data from the MARC records as they get loaded into the system as, as regular, and it will create links between those records to be able to co create that, that connection or that group. The idea of you know bringing in kind of those pride and prejudice records it's going to find all of those records that are of the similar content and link them together dynamically underneath the layer so the library staff don't have to do something extra the system is just doing it by default so all of those links are created now there is an interface to be able to um, make manual links um, throughout the system but just the the work of adding a record into your library catalog um, or modifying or updating a record is going to do all of that whether that is record by record or batch loading um, so it happens in real time as records move through the system so library staff don't have to do anything there okay i'm going to put you on the spot because you mentioned a couple of names i'm just this is i'm just kind of okay. curious i can tell you whenever i used to demo whenever i used to do trainings almost my always my default with training in the pack was either james mcpherson or battle cry of freedom and i was always used one of those that was just always my go-to anyone who's ever had a training with jameson has probably heard that at some point what is your go-to search in um pack to show off herbert my uh, go-to search is probably going to be harry potter so Harry Potter is kind of the, the best one just because that is one that a lot of libraries typically have multiple copies of in different formats. Um, and then Pride and Prejudice, actually, because, again, it's one of those ones that has been republished so many times. You know, it's been, you know, they, they have this version and this version with this forward. Um, so you end up with libraries. You know, we have one library who has, you know, 50 different Pride and Prejudice entries. 50 different bibliographic records for Pride and Prejudice. And that's just for the books. And then there are the, the books on CD. And that, you know, there was one, one single linked record that had probably 150-ish different titles. So it is the ability to show why it's needed is exactly that, to be able to see in a single entry, Pride and Prejudice, here are your books. Here are your books on CD. Here's, you know, you can also link your movies. Here are your movies if you want to pull those records right. in. You can do all of that very easily. So those are my two favorite. Okay. Before we pivot over to Justin, who is, you know, very politely listening and intently in on this conversation, my last question for you is we we've talked a lot about Ferber. Obviously, we're really excited about the work that's going into uh Carl Connect Discovery with the Ferber work, but there's a lot of other elements um that are in Carl Connect Discovery. So before we move away, just one thing, if there's one thing other than the Ferber work that you like you, you're a big fan of your favorite feature something I don't know maybe that a lot of people don't realize it's there that should anything that you would want to point out in Carl Connect Discovery what is that one thing um I would say it's our, our responsive mobile interface so everything that we do all development that we do we also um do in our mobile interface which isn't an app it is really just a um responsive design 
desktop so that when you're when you go to Carl Connect Discovery on your phone or on your smart device, you're taken to the responsive page. And I have, you know, all of those features available to me. I have my Ferberized displays in mobile, so I can see all of that. I have my geolocation, so I know how far away, you know, my library is. I have, you know, everything built in there. I have my digital library card. I have my whole library access right here. And it's just really easy to get to, and you know, it's one of my favorite things. I should have prepared this, but it's funny you mentioned that because didn't that win a gold award as well a couple of years ago? It did. It did. I promise I did not just do that, or Ebony did not just do that as a <laughs> shameless plug for that. But <laughs> as we are the ones hosting this, and it is our our product's shameless plug. You know, we, we, we are a multiple award winner for this product. So. It is true, and we continue to make it better. So um, since the time that we won the previous MLA award for Carl Connect Discovery Mobile, um, we've added more features, more functionality, and we continue to do that. We list, you know, we hear our customers, they give, you know, they let us know what they want to see, and we respond. We we want to add functionality that our libraries love, and not just their, and then that means that their patrons love. So we continue to do that, and it makes all of us completely happy and excited about what we can add for our libraries. Awesome. Thank Ebony, thanks. Now, I'm going to pivot over to uh, Justin here for a couple of minutes so we can talk about uh, TLC Cloud Services, uh, the service of the year from the MLAs. We're very excited about that. Justin, uh, welcome. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, I would search for Haruki Murakami. That's a, that's a personal problem. I don't know. I don't know how many formats would show up, but that's my go to. All right. I was going to get there. I think I was going to get there. So uh, now I don't have to ask the question. So that's off. good. Uh, no, it's all good. Uh, all right. So we're going to talk about cloud services. And uh, before before we really get in there, um, you know, for a little bit of um, editorial, editorializing, uh, I've, I've been with TLC for a while. And I have to say that this is probably one of my most favorite things, um, that w developments that I've seen in my time here. And one of the reasons why I like it so much, I wanted to make sure that I wrote this down to make sure I didn't lose it, was the fact that it has such a sweeping impact on the company beyond um, being used on one of the software platforms or the other. Um, this is really as ramifications, not just external, but internal as well. Um, and I'm, I don't know if I'm wording what I want to word correctly. So can you try and add a little bit of context of what it is that I'm really trying to convey, just the, the, the sweeping impact of what cloud services is. Yeah, I, th I think uh, a couple of things that I would say to that, um, you know, the service of the year award is is based on customers talking about their experiences, consumers of the, of the hosted products delivered through that platform. Um, but kind of behind the scenes, a couple of things happen to get there and will continue to happen. You know, one is we've we've taken a big step forward from our Gen 2 hosting infrastructure to this cloud-based hosting infrastructure, which is which is a big leap forward in terms of you know security, performance, a whole bunch of other things that that go into um, uh, just just the platform shift. But what's built into that is changes in how we um, organize, communicate, deliver those services interact between technology and operations um, because the way that we manage the delivery of that service has changed quite a bit. Um, so, you know, it's it's not just uh, let's take this server and let's drop it over on this new platform that is a slightly different version to the other platform. We're, we're really, you know, um, gone through a process and will continue to go through a process of, of leveling up how the teams work together to deliver that service uh, because a lot of dynamics change. So, for example, um, we're you know we have to manage towards cost and performance on the, on on our side, um, but we don't have hardware limits anymore. I mean, realistically, we do, but there aren't enough libraries to run us out of Oracle's hardware. <laughs> um, maybe one day that'd be awesome. Uh, um, so, you know, th those change the constraints that we operate under. And the teams have adjusted to to really think about how we deliver and manage the service differently. Um, it's it's kind of a different operational mindset, um, different business mindset. It, you, you mentioned the internal piece; that's kind of cool too. Um, and I think we talked about this in the other webinar, but I, I think it goes to the way we approach this: is um, we, you know, the old phrase "ate our own dog food" on this. 
we adopted this for internal use in the development and delivery process for the applications before we committed to hosting. So we could make sure that we were comfortable with the platform, um, had a sufficient amount of learning to deliver the quality service there, um, and had really battle tested it uh, on ourselves before we subjected anyone else to that. Um, and so, you know, that that has resulted in a situation now where our internal and external processes are much more connected in terms of how we develop, test, and deploy. Um, and you know, that that creates some consistency, shared practices, shared knowledge that makes the whole team and organization in both of the major ILS development teams um, closer together in terms of how they can work together, assist each other, use common practices. Um, so it, you know, it's really um, had an impact and initially, and this will grow over time on um, kind, of, kind of the uh, uh, culture and construct of, of the team. And it'll be really interesting for me as you know, just a closet organizational psychology nerd to just see how that plays out over time and what, uh, what that uh, allows for in terms of like uh, personal development for staff and things like that too. Um, so there's a lot of excitement around that. And we've had a lot of people chomping at the bit to take certification courses on the platform and things like that to, to really grow themselves. And that just results in more, more expertise that, uh, that helps us better serve our customers. So um, there's a lot of like kind of internal energy around that that I, I think uh, manifests in all kinds of uh, all kinds of ways that you can't even necessarily predict. So. Gotcha. And, and um, as we potentially ran the risk of shamelessly plugging earlier in the webinar, I do want to plug uh, again something else. Justin did mention um, our other webinar. He, he he mentioned our other webinar. We have had conversations about this in the past. So if you go to our website, if you go to tlcdelivers.com and go to our webinars, you're going to see that we have some other webinars. One was an in-depth discussion on TLC yep. cloud services that really gets in the weeds if you want to get some more information on that. We've also discussed Carl Connect and we've talked about um, Ferber and Ebony didn't bring it up, but she did introduce you to my favorite library technology term ever, which was Ferber Room. Um, that is also discussed in one of our previous uh, webinar conversations. So highly recommend going back and watching our archives there too. So. Um, really moving on uh, from that, I do want to ask, uh, I know you mentioned Oracle. Um, for those that don't know, again, TLC Cloud Services was done as a, with a partnership with Oracle. We are running an um, OCI. Um, Justin, talk a little bit about why uh, we went with Oracle with this and maybe not uh, another another cloud service or another hosting um, option. Sure. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, so a couple things there, both of the ILS applications have a, um, a deep history and technical integration with the Oracle database. Um, so we, you know, we definitely evaluated what is what is the ultimate best now and future operating environment for an Oracle-based application, um, and came to I think the logical conclusion that uh, it's going to be hard to beat Oracle at operating Oracle um, in terms of performance, configuration management, maintaining and updating the system. Um, that that's sort of a first party. Uh, a native advantage platform for the engine that powers both of these products. Whereas in, in a lot of other platforms, um, you're, you're typically working through a third party package of the Oracle application as a service. Um, so, you know, there's, there's uh, additional contracts involved, additional players involved, layers of communication versus in this case, you know, our team is directly the Oracle cloud technology team that we work with very closely. Um, not some kind of intermediary. So, um, so there's there's home court advantage there. Um, two, I would say, you know, through the evaluation process that I loosely described, where we used it internally, got some experience with it, we're able to vet the claims about you know performance and configuration management, all those kinds of things. Um, we came out, you know, just very comfortable with that as a as a possible strategic decision. Um, and there's a third piece and. This is this is a little uh, uh, inside industry baseball as well, but um, there are some leading players there that some of our libraries consider uh, a form of competition. And so, you know, we've also had people say um, that they appreciate the fact that we've gone with somebody who is not, um, you know, com competing with them to get books for free into the hands of, you know, right. our communities. Right. So, um, so there's also a, a little bit of um, a little bit of a decision there around uh, uh, 
you know, just what's good for libraries, not on a pure technology or business basis. Um, and that's funneling some of the some of the resources into um, somebody who doesn't, you know, compete on that access, depending on how you think about it. So, so you know, at the risk of being uh, redundant on anything that you've already said, because like you've really yeah. given us a lot of good detail as you've been going through, um, there are other, um, you know, colo hosting options that libraries um, have access to. There's other services mm -hmm. out there. Like in your opinion, what makes this superior to those other options? Well, a couple, a couple like really big pieces here. You know, one is, and I'm, I'm in danger of repeating here, um, so I right. won't go into it in much detail. But um, it, a colo environment, and not to get into the weeds on how these work, but you're sort of renting and managing the servers and. Um, other than the delivery of the internet connection and power and making sure that the generators work and that kind of stuff, you know, you you are fully responsible on your own unless you subcontract to to manage that environment. Um, and in this case, we have a a partner for that layer of it, which is you know the Oracle team that we're working with. So we're we're really bringing to bear anytime we're assisting a customer with something, building a configuration. Not just our ability to manage that environment, but our partner's ability to manage that environment as well. Whereas in Nicolo, the partner basically says, "Power's flowing, lights are on, there's diesel in the generator." You know, if if your server that you're sticking in the closet we're renting you is having an issue, good luck. That's not our problem, right? Um, so there there's there's an inherent distinction there in terms of like the resources and expertise we bring to bear. Um, Another really good example of where that kind of pays off is, um, you know, we we take uh, privacy and security um, very seriously. One thing I love about the library industry is how we approach privacy as an industry in general, patron privacy, that stewardship of data experience, trust. I love that. You know, that's really in our DNA. Um, we we work on that from kind of a security standpoint as well. You know, you and I have talked about our participation in the the cyber cyber hygiene um, penetration testing things that are subjects of other webinars. A lot of work we do behind the scenes to make sure that our our applications are properly secure. Um, we have a partner there as well in that um, part of the platform, and this is you know not something that comes baked into a colo. Part of this platform is security management and response tools and specialist teams that we can escalate to. Um, if we need a partner assistance consultation, or even you know very below uh, uh, or behind the scenes technical support on you know uh, different types of network threats and things out of that Oracle security team, um, so it, it really you know extends and supplements the already great service that we're providing with just a whole bunch of resources that are a much larger pool than we you know in the library industry can just bring directly to bear on our own. Uh, so. I mean that's a that's a huge distinction as well. One thing that um, that makes it easier for us to deliver the service in that platform, and I think the indirect benefit to the customers is just a smoother, more consistent experience here. Is with uh, with with colo management, you know, depending on how it's set up, but most of them, if you want to provide you know multi-region service, multi-geographic -ge service, any kind of geographic redundancy, you are dealing with multiple co-location environments and and there there is some complexity in how you have to manage that um, one nice thing about the environment that we're operating in is um, essentially the difference between data regions as far as we have to manage it um, is is essentially a different option in a drop down menu not to oversimplify it um, but it, it it immediately gives us access to providing closer network endpoints to our customers um, any concerns about um, sovereign rules around data residency. Um, we don't have to actually worry about that in our processes and application stack. We just need to make sure that we deploy the environments to essentially the right endpoints. Um, and that also means that if there's any reason for a customer to need to shift from one place or the other, it is extremely transparent um, and, and very quick, whereas a colo migration is a whole other Beast. We don't need to get into the details of that. And the the you know the the proof of the level of seamlessness there is, um, of course, as you said, with the Modern Library Awards. Just to tie it back, we're not you know they go out and interview our customers and tell us whether we won or not. We're not involved in that, which you know I I love the way that that's set up. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you know, one of the customers that that we worked with as an early adopter, um, the it, other than the people we were directly coordinating with to time their migration, um, no one else actually knew anything had happened, um, and that just you know that speaks to how seamless those transitions can occur. Right. And I you know and a, a non-event sometimes doesn't get a huge amount of press, but when you're the operational manager on that project or the risk manager, and everybody's like. You know, we we had to tell them it was a different place. They're like, oh well, it's it's faster, but we just thought maybe you rebooted the server or something like that. You know, right? That's that's a that's a good win, and that really proves out the value model. Last question. Um, okay. You really, and I and I'm not saying this as a complaint at all because you really laid out a lot of detail and a lot of different options and a lot of elements that um, went with TLC Cloud Services went into it. Uh, as we wrap this webinar up, we get towards the end. If there is like one thing you want our our viewers, our attendees to use as a takeaway when thinking about cloud services, what is that one thing? Hmm. Well, I, I think it's a, a generational improvement over the prior offerings is, is the high line. And to put just a couple specific bullet points on it, um, this solution, you know, we have more security, we have more options in terms of um, uh, data assurance and recovery. And we have more capabilities in terms of security on the platform as well. So on top of all the other nice things that I talked about, um, it is a level up in terms of, of uh, many of the main um, kind of technical and risk management components that we deliver over the prior solution, which when we launched it was also really best in class in the industry. So um, we're kind of continuing that march forward. If those are things that you appreciate, Take a look at what's on offer now with the solution, and you're going to see all of that and then some. Um, and I, you know, I think that's a, I think that's a good, good takeaway. Awesome. Okay, folks. Uh, what we're going to do right now is, if anybody has any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask those. I didn't see any come in, which, which is okay, which is fine. Um, but if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. While you maybe are keying in any questions, if there are any, I do believe a poll is going to come up on the screen. So if you wouldn't mind, even if you don't have a question, um, if you wouldn't mind uh, answering this quick poll for us, uh, just so we can get some information, an idea of who was on the call. Uh, also, um, in addition to that, I did see one uh, comment uh, that came in saying, if you could please have the, the, uh, the panelists' names up on the screen, while we were talking. I don't know if at any point those names did show on our webcams on who was talking. So just in case they weren't, the person who's talking right now is Jameson. Uh, Ebony talked about um, the Carl Connect Discovery and Justin was just talking about uh, cloud services. That was who uh, was on this webinar. All right, we're gonna give it a second for this uh, quick poll to close. And then we will go ahead and answer any questions and or wrap up. I will say I did say we try to keep these to a half hour as much as possible. We did start about two minutes late, so I'm going to say we only went a little bit over, which is a big win for us, um, at least for me as a moderator as we go through these. And the other thing that I do want to point out is, um, at least for me, and again, this is I'm not speaking on behalf of the company. I'm just speaking on my own behalf. Um, what I think is really um, good and something that's almost highlighted in this this uh, webinar is the fact that I'm pretty sure you can tell not all of us are in an office space right now. Um, you can tell that, I mean, we all may have varying levels of neutral wall color right now, um, but we really are in um, a work from home um, posture. We are in a remote posture. We have been um, since the Thursday before St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we, um, as a company, was there, we were very aggressive and very quick to react to what was happening. And I kind of point that out because A, we still are because um, you know, TLC has really put a, a premium of value on um, everyone's health and safety. And as we are in various regions of the country, various regions of community spread, early stages of mass vaccination, you know, we really are, we are um, staying as healthy as possible. But I'm saying this because while all this was happening and while we were all remote, TLC was still pushing forward we were still innovating. We were still doing development and, and, and really changing the scope of what we do. 
Ebony mentioned that this has been years in development with, with, with the fervorization in Carl Connect Discovery. That didn't change just because we weren't all sharing office space that continually moves forward, continually improves, as is our hosted solution, as is everything else. You know, TLC, I mean, faced this challenge head on and really went with it and, and leaned into it. And, you know, as someone who, again, I, you know, has been with TLC for a while, incredibly proud of the team. And, Incredibly proud of everyone. And I think, you know, these awards are really a testament to what the future holds for TLC. And as I've been saying that, A, to share my opinion, but also to maybe buy some time for questions, um, I haven't seen any come in. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the session now. Um, I would like to thank everyone for attending uh, today's webinar. There will be more in the future. There will be one next month. Um, keep an eye out on our page uh, for what the topic may be. Again, if you're missing the content that we used to um, offer on a more frequent basis, please go back to that archive and you can always check out whatever we have there. On that note, thank you all very much for uh, being our panelists. Greatly appreciated. Uh, my name is uh, Jameson. Uh, thank you. Everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy, continually wash your hands, wear your masks, social distance, and we will see you in the future. Thank you very much. Everybody have a great day.